if you remember a little while back, I did a bunch of videos reviewing components and modules from IC Station. I had a new Arduino project I was working on, but I didn't want to release it yet. Well, after four board revisions, I finally got it right. So this is exactly what I'm building. I'm modeling off of the little cheapo $6 temperature and humidity sensors that you can get from Walmart. Well, I wanted to make one with an Arduino. And what I came up with is this little job right here. It runs on an Arduino, but it tells you temperature, barometric pressure, and humidity with heat index as well. Now what's included in this is, of course, a SparkFun Pro Mini, 5 volt, 16 megahertz. DHT22 humidity sensor. A Bosch BMP180 pressure, barometric pressure sensor. The Nokia 5110 graphic LCD and my custom board that I've been designing. Now for a slightly closer look, since I can't exactly take the screen off, it's soldered directly on there. On this side, you can see the little silver, the BMP180 at the top. The bottom half of the components are the NCP1402 boost regulator that takes the power from a single AA battery from one and a half volts up to 3.3 and it'll actually run down to 0.3 volts before this finally dies out. On the back and actually on the front here you can see you got the humidity sensor, four pins connected in. On the bottom you can see I got the Nokia 5110 LCD soldered in and right below it on the side you can see the Pro Mini put right in there. Now this little unit is open source. I'm not charging for it I'm going to put it with the open source hardware, and I don't feel like building them, putting them on Tindy. So instead of using GitHub for all the software and passing on the files and everything, because it's kind of a pain in the butt for me, I've never gotten a good hang of GitHub, I'm going to put everything on a shared folder on my Dropbox account. And it will be linked down below for you. Check the description, make sure you expand it, it'll be inside there. In there, you will find my raw KiCad folder. Remember, I use KiCad for my EDA. I don't use Eagle or Altium. I like the free version. So you're going to have that. You're going to have the schematic. You're going to have pre-made Gerber files if you want to send it to your own fab. You will have the stencil files because for the surface mount components, especially the BMP180, the pins are extremely small. It's probably best you get a stencil. I order from Osh Stencils. You can order wherever you want. Now as for battery life on this, ever since I started prototyping this about four or five months ago, it's been running, even on the prototype when I had it on the breadboard, on this one AA battery. It's actually still at 1.35 volts, so I can theoretically guess it's gonna run at least a minimum of six months, more likely a year, because with the Pro Mini in here, it's in a sleep mode for eight seconds, then it pulls the two sensors, tries to get the information, redisplays it to the screen, and then goes back to sleep for eight seconds. So 99.8% of the time that the Arduino has power to it, which is all the time, it's always in sleep mode. It's pulling 200 microamps, nothing. So it'll run off this AA battery for God knows how long. Now also, if you go on my Dropbox, and you get the bill of materials, make sure the way I have the code set up, unless someone else modifies the code, I have it running on a 5 volt 16 megahertz version of the Pro Mini. I do not have it running on an 8 megahertz 3.3 volt version. So technically I'm overclocking or undervolting this chip, but I've never had a problem with it and I could never get the timing right because I actually tried with a 3.3 volt Arduino at 8 megahertz. I can never get the timing for everything to work correctly. So I stuck with the 16, tried it at 3.3, and it never had a problem. So just keep that in mind when you order from SparkFun, you order one of these boards or one of the eBay cheapo ones that you can get from overseas. 5 volt, 16 megahertz. When it comes to the DHT22 humidity sensor, they're not bad. They're only two or three dollars each, but I get kind of iffy results out of some of them. Like I ordered four of them from a supplier and two of them wouldn't read. It just gave me 2% humidity all the time. 
and two of them work perfectly. So there is a bit of a quality control issue with them. If you're going to order these, I suggest getting three or four. This way you got a few to fumble with and you have one or two for spares as long as you get three out of the four that are good. So keep that in mind. Now as for the Nokia 5110 LCD, you'll see in my code, I have a certain section in there that controls the contrast. Now you can see in here, you can't see all the rest of the pixels. I have the contrast set perfectly and this actually helps reduce the amount of power too. But when I was prototyping, such as when I plugged in this one, even though it's the exact same screen, the contrast was off ever so slightly and you can start seeing all the pixels. So it's pulling more power and you didn't get that crisp picture. So when you get your own screen, you might have to adjust the contrast and it's not done on the circuit board, it's done in the software. And you will see it in the sketch file for Arduino. There's a little section in there for contrast. You raise the number up a few points. I think it's at like 57 or 65 or something right now. Raise it up a few points, that'll make it a little darker raise it down a few points if you're starting to see that all the pixels to lighten it up a little bit. Now for my final little blur before I'm done this video, I am not, not an Arduino expert. I'm still learning Arduino, I'm still learning how to do the code, and I'm very much still a novice. Most of this code, actually probably about 90% of it, was all bashed together from different little portions of code that I used. So. If you're going to leave a comment down below asking me a coding question, chances are I'm probably going to ignore you because I can't answer the question. Now, if it comes to the general hardware, I can give you a hand. Go ahead and leave a comment below. And also make sure that you have prior experience. If you're going to order this board and build one yourself, make sure you have prior experience in surface mount soldering and you have to have a reflow oven. There are no pins on the BMP-180 that you can use a soldering iron, a really fine tip to get to. They're all underneath the chip, so you have to do it with a reflow oven or a hot plate, whichever way you want to do it. So keep that in mind.